and how he discovered that sometimes you need to step away to come back strongly. And also, bass guitarist Brian Ritchie tells us why they have such a ridiculous name. Musically, their set is influenced by rockabilly, jazz, folk, blues, African, Indian, gospel, psychedelia, the Rolling Stones and the Kinks. Add the odd bagpipe, nose flute, conch shell and brass section, and you get to realise what they're all about. They remind me a bit of the Velvet Underground or The Doors. They've got a bit of that American seediness about them. Violet Femmes are an entertaining band. They can sell out the Albert Hall and the audience absolutely adores them. From time to time, our camera drifts away from the concert to paint a rather surreal picture to follow the lyrics and mood of the songs. They are, thankfully, one of the few bands that don't take themselves too seriously. Violet Femmes do have a wonderful sense of humour. So, from the drummer who does it standing up, one Victor De Lorenzo, with Brian Ritchie and Gordon Garno, Violent Femmes in an organic concert recorded live at the Lyceum London in their show which they've called No, Let's Start Over. Violent Femmes.
know your papa loves you, good children go to heaven. You know your papa loves you, good children go to heaven. I gave her a push, I gave her a shove. I pushed with all my might, I pushed with all my love. I threw my child to a fatherless But I never heard her hit She was screaming as she fell But I never heard her hit
feel like I'm gonna crawl away and die. I'm so lonely. Feel like I'm gonna hack it apart. I'm so lonely. Feel like I'm gonna crawl away and die. I'm so lonely. Feel like I'm gonna hack it apart. I'm gonna hack, 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 hack it apart. Was a damn good reason to be lonely, lonely, lonely. I gotta get something or somebody or something to make you mad. Got an army. We teach how to act like a man. Have we got an army? Let me tell you, we can fight. Have we got an army? And we're gonna keep the worrying. What are they worrying about today? People worry. No, you see, I learned my lesson. And I don't even want to hear about your confession. Thank you.
letters of a word called faith. And if you feel like it, you can join in with the band and call off the letters. I'm, I'm saying, I know a lot of you might, might not know what I'm saying, but I'm trying to say I don't, I don't believe in no car. I don't believe in General Motors. I don't believe in Ronald Reagan or the League of Women Voters. I don't believe in these things. All these things might fail. I don't believe it's gonna snow. It might sleep rain or hail, but I believe in the Father. Harold, anyway, I haven't seen him all week. Maybe his face exploded. Why doesn't somebody tell him? Like what? You should do something about your zits? I don't know. Maybe like slip him some Clearasil. No one's going to tell you that your face you need Ultra Clearasil. It's so effective, you'll have fewer spots in just five days. He's back. Harold? Someone must have told him. Ask your pharmacist for Ultra Clearasil. Fewer spots in five days. Board? Severely discharged. Cool chinwag. The chat line where anything can happen. I was only 18 when I first met him. Um, he was quite a hunk, and I really fancied him. He used to go to cinemas, um, and maybe go in the town. My mum liked him. It was just great. I mean, I couldn't ask for nothing better. But I never thought for one minute he could be HIV positive because I trusted him. Things would have been very different if we'd used condoms. For the facts about AIDS and HIV, phone the National AIDS Helpline free on 0800-567-123. Introducing Caractere. Caractere, the new fragrance for men by Daniel Hester. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. I can't you hear that pillar pot and the happy to wish your step on the He loves life. That's his character. Caractere by Daniel Hester, the new fragrance for men. Sharp. When we make a camcorder, it's simple enough for everyone to use. In fact, we only ever put more advanced features in, so you'll get more fun out. The extremely low-light shooting facility in this model, for instance, with the most powerful optical zoom lens and a brilliant colour viewfinder. They're the sort of features that make a lot of sense, even when nothing else does. For camcorders and Nikam stereo video recorders, Sharp makes sense.
And all because the lady loves Cadbury's milk tray. This Christmas, give him a gift that will help bring you a little closer. The revolutionary Gillette Sensor for a shave that is unsurpassed. So please learn that he's inside me. In my time of trouble, he will hide me. Well, we're all from the 
Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is uh, actually it's one of the largest cities in America, but it's fairly unknown. It doesn't have the mystique of a place like New Orleans or San Francisco or New York City. It's, it's sort of a slow community where all the musicians, if, if you hang around for a few years, you eventually know almost every musician in the city, whether they're from a blues or country or rock and roll or punk, any kind of background, because there's a lot of interaction. Victor and I had played in a few other bands before the Violent Femmes started. And uh, I think Gordon and I did a concert together, and he, he was playing as a solo artist. And the promoter said, listen, there's this guy I want you to look at. He's 16 years old, and he's a Lou Reed imitator. I think you'll like him a lot. And I said, no way. I don't think I'm going to like this. But I checked it out, and I thought Gordon had charisma and good songs, and he was a real good performer. But he was quite young at that time. It wasn't for a few years later that we started playing. Uh, how that came about, it was very spontaneous. Gordon uh, and I ran into each other at a club looking at uh, this band called the Oil Tasters from Milwaukee. And he said that he was playing in his high school the next morning. Would I like to accompany him? So I said, well, I don't know if I can wake up that early. But then I said, ah, oh, why not? And we went to his school, and he was supposed to perform at uh, an honor awards uh, presentation for the whole school where they give awards to the best students, of which he was one of them. And he was supposed to do this, like, soft ballad type thing. And we went out there and started that and stopped and did Give Me the Car instead, which is one of our wildest songs. And the whole auditorium exploded. And the, the principal of the school was off to the side of the stage saying, no, no, and everybody was screaming and yelling, and it was hysteria, and they threw Gordon out of school, and, uh, well, it was quite a good start for the band. After that, Victor was in Europe at that time, and he came back, and we just started playing together on an informal basis in a tiny coffee house that was so small that we didn't even use any microphones or anything. We just used acoustic instruments, and, uh, in fact, that's how we got our silly name, The Violent Femmes, because we didn't think the band would stay together. We thought, we'll just play a few shows, and why not have a, a, an incredibly ridiculous name, just for no reason at all. <laughs> the next thing we knew, we were quite popular, so, so that was uh, a real organic start for the band. Well, when we started this band, the um, most important thing to us was the music. And we never uh, designed anything with the hopes of having a recording contract with an independent or a major label in the United States. We did it for our own personal enjoyment and also uh, for other people's enjoyment. So it wasn't really uh, something that, that was uh, premeditated as, as an eventual end to what we were doing. We were just lucky enough to uh, have sent out some demo tapes and people respond to them very well. And uh, although no one wanted to sign us up for a record deal, we still had a lot of very nice response to it. And when we finally got the money together to do our own record, after we sent it out, Slash Records in Los Angeles was very interested, and they in turn put out the record as it was recorded. So there was no tampering by the record company, and I guess that's something to be proud of. Now, you grew up um, with a father who is a Baptist minister. How much does religion play a part in your songwriting? Well, um, I'm coming to, to, to believe and think more and more that religion um, is, if it's not your life, if it's something separate that's your religion to be added on to your life, then it, it's, there's nothing there. It's, it's not real at all. So if um, religion truly is my life, then my life definitely would relate to my songwriting. And there, there's, um, they would be uh, very, very, very close together. Do you find it um, difficult, having had a religious background, leading this kind of life, the music life, on the road? Well... Where there are lots of temptations? Well... <laughs> oh, I... I don't know if I'd want to get into that right now, but yeah, 
Certainly, of course. Um, although um, things which which I believe have have uh, helped me in immeasurably, um, whereas I'd believe that I wouldn't even be here talking to you now um, if it wasn't for my faith um, and the way which um, things are. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here. So it's it's been a, a great a great help. Your music certainly is unusual. How would you? describe it to yourself? Well, if we started describing it, then we probably would uh, lose our spontaneity, but it's, it's basically a lot of different kinds of American music, but there's such a variety. We're doing rock and roll, rockabilly, country, blues, free jazz, uh, folk, gospel, and most of this is American. On the other hand, we also listen to Indian music and Middle Eastern music, African music, and, and these elements creep in. And from the English point of view, we like a lot of psychedelia, and we like most of the bands that were in England in the 60s, like the Beatles, the Stones, and the Kinks. And this has been an influence on us. So it's, it's basically an American form of music, but with, with uh, international influences as well. What led you to experimenting with so many instruments? I mean, you play drums, and you play washboard, and you had bagpipes on stage. That just comes from a love of music. And we carry on the old jazz tradition of allowing people to sit in. So that's why you find that uh, on particular nights we may have a bagpipe player, or the next night we may have someone up in wax paper. So it varies from night to night, depending on who we can find. <laughs> Do they get paid? Sometimes they get paid uh, either with money or uh, just uh, from the experience or they can have whatever they can find backstage. Now you say that you pursued this career for love of music. Right. You have to survive. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? By playing music. Uh, we've been lucky enough that uh, in the three and a half years that we've been playing together, we've been supported pretty much uh, alone by, by our playing of music. It was very, very possible to uh, exist at the beginning, even though we weren't getting paid that much because it was only the three of us, and sometimes a sound man would travel with us. So that, that kept the cost down quite a bit. So um, even though we aren't very, very comfortable, and uh, what goes along with, uh, some people believe, what goes along with being uh, a rock star is that you have loads of money and uh, many drugs in your pocket and women around every corner is not necessarily true and especially not true for us. What do you have? I have uh, peace of mind. And we live in the time of the image with groups, don't we? Why, why haven't you bothered? Well, probably precisely because we do live in the time of the image and, and we, th we think that musically and personally we can't live with the idea of having to be a persona all the time. It's, uh, and we're just three people that are doing exactly what we want to do, and we don't restrict, restrict ourselves musically. We don't say, well, we're using only synthesizers and nothing else, or we're only playing country rock and no blues, or, or anything like that. We're, we just do any kind of music that we want, and as far as our image is concerned, we just wear our street clothes for the most part. And, uh, uh, on stage, we, we don't think it's our hairstyles or the kind of clothes that we're wearing, designer clothes or, or any of these things that are going to make us popular. It's, it's our ability as entertainers. Oh my 
mama, my mama, my mama, my mama, and you kept your eye, your eye on your son. You know you've had problems, you're not the only one. And when you should have left, you left you on a run. It's my mama, my mama, my mama, my mama. Take a look now, get your boys done. He's walking around, he's number one. He went downtown and he got out my gun and said, Oh, shoot, 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 that thing at me. Don't shoot, 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 that thing at me. You know you got my sympathy.
up and I'm so strong out. I'm high as a kite, I just am I stop to check you out. Let me go. Now you. That's not fair. <laughs> Give me the words. <laughs> There, one time, everybody all together now. When I'm walking, I stop and stop. And I'm so stuck out. Let's hide. I'm high as a kite. I just might stop to check you out. Let me go on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody.